thank you so much, guys, for coming to me. celebrating contemporary Nigerian cinema. We have a very fun day tomorrow at the University of Southern California. If you uh, thought parking in Hollywood was hard, <laughs> you love USC. Um, take the train, take an Uber. Um, I should say this, the Kids' Choice Awards are happening at the Galen Center tomorrow. So, so uh, come early. Um, it's going to be a great day. We're going to scream. Two feature films, uh, Lionheart and King of Boys. We have the director of King of Boys uh, joining us for Q&A. And we're going to kick things off with a panel discussion at 3 o'clock. Uh, that's going to feature uh, the, the director of Tonight's Film, the director of King of Boys, and uh, actor Bank W, who's, of course, the star of this movie. And uh, uh, following, I guess, an avalanche of complaints, we are now going to have a food truck nearby. <laughs> to make sure that people can get a bite to eat in between the movies. Uh, so I really can't wait to see you guys again tomorrow, and thank you for being such great supporters of Hollywood here in Hollywood. And thank you. Thank you. Some people have asked outside why do we do this, and this for us is saying another side of Nigeria. We have a lot of things that are said about us. Some of it are true, a lot of it are not. Um, so this film show, films like this show, our culture show who we are and where our future is going. Tonight we have some of the best representatives of the industry here. And I will invite them out here so we can give them an applause. Um, Topek Oshin, the director of
wife had just make a very big cry. And she wasn't ready for consideration status of the American film industry. In this regard, Mr. Ose told me that it is a big deal to have your film showcased in the Egyptian theater. So in this regard, I want to urge the American film industry to continue to embrace and support, support our Nigerian themes here the Nollywood. I wish to reassure you all as of the continued support of Nigeria's three missions that I have earlier mentioned in the United States for meaningful and laudable initiatives such as this. I believe you all would agree with me when I say the organization of this, organizers of this wonderful event deserve a countless applause. <laughs> I wish to express my sincere gratitude to the organizers for the invitation extended to all of us, but only few of us could make it, and to be part of this event. I wish you a wonderful time here. Please have a wonderful, um, and enjoy the screening, and then enjoy also the question and answer session. So have fun, have a good time. Thank you. Um, we are here tonight because uh, some people have been able to help us put it together. This is a very volunteer driven and run uh, event. And Alex and I have gone into a little bit of depth to do this sometimes, but it's worth it for the sake of Nigeria. But I want to thank some of the sponsors here that are uh, helped put this together. Streamliner have been great. Uh, they are going to throw at the party that will blow your mind after the screening. And I just want to recognize, if Amadou Diallo can stand up for a second so we can all come up for him. Amadou? Okay, it's not in here. It's Celestina here, Celestina King. Well, we will clap for them in our stage here. They'll be very good. Um, and 
Hollywood Entertainment Productions, Amy Fantastically, Esusa Ogumbo with Transport. So we thank everybody and please enjoy the show. Basically forcing me <laughs> to agree. Um, love you too. <laughs> so for me, it was. Um, I think it was all about the story. Um, you know, when they first tried to sell me on coming on board the project, they actually didn't send me the script. So the first thing I heard was, "Oh, you have to go to Bauchi for a month." I said, "No, I'm not going." <laughs> Just like ba uh, Basi did in the in the movie. I said, "No, what am I going to? I'm a busy guy. You know, I can't go for a month." And you know. In Nigeria, you know, most of us are, are used to Lagos and maybe Abuja. 
but we don't really know the rest of the country. And so we, I didn't know that Nigeria was this beautiful. And this is my country. Um, so for me, it was like when I read the script, I said, okay, this is a story that has to be told. And so I went from not wanting to become an actor in the film to becoming an actor and a co-executive producer because I wanted to make sure the film was done. And uh, for me, it was just, it was about that story. It was about the script. It was about the hidden messages. On the surface, it's a comedy about a rich, spoiled kid. But when you dig deep, it's about girl-child education and empowerment and communities coming together and peace and understanding and tolerating people from different backgrounds. And I think that's something Nigeria needs and the world needs. And so to answer your question, thank you. So to answer your question, for me and Sadiq and the rest of the cast, it was about following her instructions to get the, the, the depth of the story out. So the connection and the growth and the trajectory of characters from where they start from and where they end up, that was very important. And Tokwe helped us bring that out. You know, another thing I noticed is the theme of a son trying to come into his own and not live in his father's shadow. So it's sort of the unusual coming of age story. Um, as you can tell, Asi was 32, which is quite you know, farther along for a coming of age story. But this is reality. This is you know, what you find in real life situations where um, you have grown ass men who, you know, <laughs> who just don't want to grow up. And, and this is the case with Basi. He was, you know, quite the Basi. Like <laughs> <laughs> and he was quite the unusual one. And um, you know, and that, that's what I liked represented in that story. It's not the, it's not the usual story. It's not the usual thing you find, like a teenager, you know, or a young guy in his early twenties. This is a grown man who just needed to connect with himself, find himself. And when he did, he saw that everything else changed and everyone around him. Tell me how you chose your cinematographer. Okay, so um, I had an unusual team of cinematography and that was my choice. Um, so I had two directors of photography, um, yeah, Bishop and uh, Pindo. And I chose both of them for different reasons. Bishop is that passionate guy who you tell go and then he goes times one million. You know, and Pindam is the quiet creative, is quite introspective and all of that. And I wanted a blend of both energies. I know it was selfish, but I got to the point of convincing the producers that this is what I want. You know, I want a blend of these guys' creativity and energies on this film. I want to feel that energy and passion. And also I want Pindam's creativity. And Pindam was also from the north. Uh, where this film is situated, so I needed that as well, like a whole artist who understood the culture, who understood the sensibilities, you know, and then who blend that with the creativity and, and help me create um, that almost perfect world of, of, of the North. Okay, now your editor, working with your editors, you have one editor, how did you work with your editor? What's so, your workflow? Yeah, so uh, initially the the first cut was strangely done remotely um, because right after we, we were done shooting, I had to then go off for a course. So he put together the first assembly, and then when I got back in, we then started, you know, started doing it back and forth and back and forth. But what I did, even right from before shooting, was to sit him down and say, "Banjo, this is, you know, the vision. This is my vision for this. This is what I want." You know, from the beginning, the colors, the color themes for Lagos and then Bauchi. We had that long, you know, meeting back and forth. So when it was time to put together that first assembly without me, he understood what I wanted. You know, he knew where I was going. And that sort of speeded up the process when we then had the luxury of sitting together and going through them scene by scene. You know, to say, is this what you wanted? Yeah, almost, but you know, let's tweak it here and there. And, um, the first part of the movie was what, two hours, 36 minutes? Okay, now you were the producer on this. Co-executive. Co Co-executive Co 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 producer. Yeah. Now, did you see the early cuts? I did see it when it was two hours and 36 minutes. I did see when it was two hours and 36 minutes. And I said, okay, this is a good film here, but it's too long. <laughs> um, and that's always the challenge when you're a filmmaker, and especially when you're very into the storytelling you tend to want to shoot the, the whole script and there was a whole lot of things. And then they were all very good, but I think Tokpe did a fantastic job on cutting it down to the film. 
put to the final version that we saw. I think the pace was right. I think the story moves along, and I think you know you you don't really tune out at any point. It just kind of sucks you in and just keeps you there until, until the end. So fantastic, fantastic job, Scott. Right? And actually, I, I should say. Um, Fantastic job to talk about and to Kemi and Iti, but the women in Nigeria's feminine business are killing it. And I think, I think this is something important to celebrate because I think that Africa has been a male-dominated society for so long. Um, and I think that it's unfair the way that we treat women and, and females in, in Africa. And I think that... What you're seeing in Nollywood is women taking the bull by the horn and ste stepping up to their rightful position and leading the way. Some of the best films in Africa are done by Tokbe and Kemi and women like that. Um, and, I, and I love that this film has hidden messages about empowering our girls and treating them right and letting them achieve their dreams. And, you know, I, I think it's time for Nollywood to tell these types of stories. So I'm proud to be a part of this film. Thank you. I was told that we have half an hour to do this Q&A, so I want to throw it out to you guys, because I'm sure you have some questions out there. I want to make sure I get all the questions in, I'll ask a few other questions. Who has a question? Yes. For the people who didn't hear the question, she said, I'm an actress here in LA, and I want to know, what's the budget of this movie? Um, so by Nigerian standards, um, it was a huge budget. So that's the budget of about five regular movies. Um, yeah, so it was huge. Huge. It was huge. Anybody else? Yes. Okay, let me repeat the question. For those who didn't hear, he wants to know about the experience and the culture of the North and the South. Yes, yeah, so um, that, that's a very important point, and it's the one reason why I almost uh, didn't accept to write this film, because um, authenticity was important to me, representing these people exactly how they are, and to be able to give them a film you know, that they saw themselves in. Um, so a lot of research went into this. I had to go up north, point when we're editing the scripts and all of that, watch the people, see how they dress, uh, see how they uh, address each other, you know, see how they relate and all of that. And then went back into the script and said, listen, Nance, we have to tweak this part, we have to tweak this part, you know, for all the, that authenticity. Spoke to a lot of people from the book as well. So a, a lot of research you know, went into that for me to represent them the proper way. And when the movie was done, they totally got it. They told me, got it. Like, one of the feedback that we kept getting from Lagos was um, Zainab, uh, the character Zainab, you know, that she didn't speak a lot, you know, and Lagos people were like, no, why? You got such a big star. Why didn't she speak a lot? But people from the north, <laughs> you know, but the people from the northern Nigeria got it, and they were like, that's exactly how we are. Look at her, that's exactly who we are, you know, so that, for them, that was nailed, that was authentic, that connected. So, you know, that for me is the biggest thing about Okinawa, um, mirroring of people who are not, but they got it, and they appreciated it, and got the messages, and you know, that's such a blessing. The question, was this film released in other countries? Okay, so at the moment, we've only done a Nigerian run. Uh, we released in the cinema the December 28th, and um, it's just completed its Nigerian run, so we're in the next leg of distribution, which is to the US, UK, and all of that. So we have a UK, yeah. Yeah, we were in Ghana as well. Um, so we have a UK premiere coming up next month, I think, and then all the parts. So it's 
if I could just follow that up briefly. Is it, is it being released in other African countries as well? It will come eventually. Like, like he said, it's been released in Ghana. So there are discussions for other African countries as well. But it's all in process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Jamal Ibrahim. I'm a doctor from Nigeria and also a northerner. Um, my question is, how did you work with these girls? Because it's like it's, the northerners are very conservative with their women, especially the girl child. They wouldn't even let them go in front of cameras and stuff. So how did you achieve that? How did you work with the girls from Nigeria in the north? Because they're very strict with the girls, very conservative. So uh, just like we convinced Banky, uh, <laughs> convincing most of them uh, to be in the movie was about letting them in on the story. This is the story we're trying to make. This is how it represents you. This is what we're trying to do for the girl child. This is what we're trying to do for um, a society, for Nigeria, for bringing us all together as one and you know, helping us look beyond our, our diversity and seeing us together as one. So these were some of the strong points, you know, that got most people, most of these girls, you know, to, to be a part of this film. Also in representing them authentically. If you would notice that we, we didn't have contact between male and female because this is what is authentic to the northern people. <laughs> when a sports teacher fell down, you would expect that, you know, Basi would pull her up, but they couldn't touch her because they knew that that would be trouble. So all of those little bits here and there, you know, convinced most of the Hausa actors say, yes, this is us. You know, we recognize this. This is not going to be trouble. We want to be part of this. Okay, we have a few more questions, then we have to wrap it up. I'm going to get somebody in the back. Can you wave your hand? I'm waving. Okay, yes. <laughs> Me? Me? You. Wave your hand again. Your yes. 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 Yes, sir. Thank you very much. No, whoever. Uh, it was a woman. Oh, okay. to you, Tobre, and your team. And Banky, you're awesome. My name is Tiana Bibich from Cameroon. I'm an actress and a producer as well. I know as an actress myself that sometimes when you have to work with your spouse, it's not easy. So my question goes to you, Banky. You were walking throughout for how long that this production must have taken you with your wife, where you at one point distracted. <laughs> uh, here's what I'll say. My wife is one of the most brilliant actors I've ever seen. And so, as a smart man, I used her as my acting coach. And so, you know, the greatest thing about having her on set was I got to run my lines over and over again and basically get directed in the room before I got directed on set. And uh, so it was, it was a, a fantastic plus for me. I, I, I learn a lot from her all the time. And, and this movie is no different. She taught me a lot. So. Now right here. Uh, I have a very important question. We live in the 21st century, and uh, today, when you look at the things, Africa, African continent has uh, uh, like 100 billion dollars entertainment industry. Example, this movie, if you put it in all African continent, you will make a lot of money, and you will create a job for young Africans and also give opportunity to these young actors. But when we are will continentalize African film industry, how we can make it, how we can uh, uh, create uh, a continental entertainment market and industry. Can you try to talk to the president of the Nigerian film industry? Okay, well, there's no president of film industry. Um, I think that, I, I understand the meaning of what you're saying though, which is that there is an opportunity for a lot of collaboration across African countries. I think that African trade, the walls between African trade 
need to come down. And this is this is bigger than just the film business. This is about Africa, the economy of Africa as a whole. I think the walls um, that are uh, kind of standing in the way of that intra-African trade need to come down. I think if you really look at it, sometimes it's easier to import things from China than it is to get it from another African country. And I think that, you know, honestly, Africans, we are our own problem. Um, and honestly, I think that, you know, there are, there are good signs and there are steps in the right direction, but we need to do more. I think we need to work together more. I think we need to explore and exploit our continent for our own benefit. I think we need to tell our own story. Um, I think that there's a massive consumer market in Africa, and if we're not careful, then it will always be people from outside the continent that benefit from it, whereas Africans need to do it for ourselves. I think that Africans will be the ones that will save Africa if they decide for it to be so. So, getting to the meat of your question, yes, we agree. Um, it would be great to be able to drop a film in Nigeria today and it's running simultaneously across the, the continent. But we're not there yet. But hopefully, you know, we will, we will do that. And a lot of us that you see here are working towards that day. And I want to encourage every African in the building to take ownership in the continent and the countries that you want to see. Well, let's put our hands together. Thank you. Thank you.